Hello everybody and welcome back to another episode of RPG Radio. My name is Winback and on today's episode we are going to be taking a look at all of the Diablo 4 builds I have in the wings right now. Now these are all barbarian builds and some of them we have a little bit more in depth on the channel in bigger videos but I did want to bring some attention to each of them because I think that you can play a lot of different ways in this game and I don't think it's actually getting a lot of credits for the amount of diversity that you can get away with. Maybe we're not talking about you know level 100 pinnacle boss killing diversity but I think there's something to be said for at least completing very, very high into the end game on whatever class you're enjoying in whatever way that you want to play them. So I just wanted to showcase a couple of things that I've been working on and how well I think they are working. Now, two of these barbarians are seasonal and the other two are going to be eternal. The highest level barbarian that I've got right now is just shy of 83. Now the whole intention behind this build was to give Call of the Ancients, uh, the ultimate ability, some time in my repertoire. The one reason I never picked up Call of the Ancients is because I would see it so often in Whirlwind builds. So part of my brain is thinking, oh that's a requirement, guess I'm never going to use that. But no, it is not. Uh, so we're going to take as our basic skill, Lunging Strike. Lunging Strike is one of the favorites of the, uh, the basic skill categories here because it's got a lot of mobility in it, and it is going to pair really well with a spear, with a, uh, the stabbing weapon of our two-handed variety. Spear and polearm, sorry, is going to make much more sense the further we get to the end of this build, but as far as that goes, just remember Lucky Hit is going to be something that we want to work with and we get a lot more of that when it comes to pole arms. After we take the lunging strike though we're gonna pick up upheaval as our core skill along with endless fury at this uh, core skill juncture. So upheaval lets you basically fling a whole bunch of damage across a big cone in front of you the only downside really is the fury cost and that's about 40 percent of a full bar so you can get two of these off if you have an entire bar of fury which is why that we want to have the endless fury generating more uh, fury from our basic abilities we're also going to be using the polearm uh, whichever polearm that we have at the time attached to lunging strike so that when we hit people with that lunging strike it's going to generate 15 percent more fury because of endless fury uh, upheaval also gives us a chance to stun with enhanced upheaval and violent upheaval is going to give us berserking dependent on the amount of enemies that we hit with it which is really easy because it is a big aoe ability now that being said, the core tier of this skill tree is basically just paying for itself. Upheaval deals damage and uh, Endless Fury is going to help Lunging Strike fuel Upheaval more. It's good AoE clear, it's nothing to, you know, ignore, but it's not going to be the biggest, most fun part of the build, at least not yet. On the defensive skill tier, we're picking up Iron Skin. Iron Skin is, it's just good. Iron Skin is good, but I haven't been able to use it in any of the builds that I've played so far because all of the slots in those builds are taken up by something that is required to deal damage. So in this build, I want to take Iron Skin to have a barrier that is also going to be giving us Fortify because I want some overpower damage later on in the build as well. But remember, just for the time being, it is very good just as a shield, just for getting fortify. The next tier of skill is the brawling tier, and this is where the build really starts to get extra goofy. So, what we are doing is taking both charge and leap, which are going to be, I know, pretty silly when you're considering them, but there is a legendary aspect that you can get for the barbarian that will let you increase the damage of your next charge or your next leap, by a specific percentage for the amount of core skill that you are using. It doesn't make a lot of sense now because that is going to be later in this build, but basically 
you're going to use these brawling skills as damage dealing skills and you're going to beef them up with your upheaval which is going to basically pay for itself as you are darting around the battlefield with your lunging strike things sound weird now i promise they'll get better but charge max it out as quick as you can it has an unstoppable built into it and the knockback that we get from enhanced charge stuns if we hit people into the wall as of this video the patch hasn't dropped yet but the new patch coming for diablo 4 is supposed to fix how charge hits enemies so this should be much better as things unravel or i guess unfold is the better word but once the dev team patches this ability it should be more consistent for damage and stunning enemy so we take power leap for that after enhanced leap enhanced leap reduces the cooldown if you don't hit anybody but it's kind of like you know whatever because you're not really using leap to travel often you're using leap to get in or to generate fury and you get 40 fury for landing a power leap which is equivalent to one upheaval and it's going to be dealing some pretty consistent fury generation for upheaval which is our backup damage dealing in this case now call of the ancients the whole uh, pride and joy of this build is going to summon three ancients to uh, aid us in battle one of them will leap and he deals damage with dual wielding weapons he's got frenzy and leap in his kit uh, the other is a whirlwind spinning barbarian who deals damage in a pretty big aoe around himself and the third is going to use upheaval just like we are to deal damage in a huge cone now, Korlik, Talik, and Modok are the three ancients, and these guys have been around since Diablo 2. The nostalgia factor is high up, and seeing more barbarians anywhere on the screen at any point is always going to be a fun time for me. So, that being said, uh, Prime Call of the Ancients, the first modifier, is going to give you 20% bonus attack speed and 10% increased damage while Call of the Ancients is going. Call the Ancients last for six seconds, so that's a pretty solid damage buff. Uh, and Supreme Call of the Ancients is going to give each of your Ancients an extra power. So Korlik, the dual wielding Leaper, is going to give you 10 Fury each time he hits someone with his Frenzy. So anytime that he auto attacks, you're getting 10 more Fury over the course of six seconds. Talik is your Whirlwinder, who is going to slow enemy down by 50% for one second when they get damaged by Whirlwind, which can upgrade some of our damage later on with a couple of decent passives going on. And then Modok, our upheaval boy, is going to have a 30% chance to stun enemies for three seconds while using his upheaval. Considering it's his big claim to fame, that is a good chunk of stun. Now, when it comes to key passives for this build, I think that there are options. Uh, I think Unbridled Rage could be really good. I haven't played too much around with this passive just yet. It's going to make your core skills basically deal double 0.35 damage, but they're going to cost double fury, which is ultimately pretty bad for upheaval. That's uh, 80 fury. So that's an entire bar, and I don't know if we can necessarily cope with that. I think the damage would be really good, but I don't think that Fury cost is entirely worth it. The other one is going to be Walking Arsenal. This is pretty common for Barbarians, but dealing direct damage with a uh, two-handed bludgeoning, two-handed slashing, or two-handed dual-wielded weapon is going to increase your damage by 10% for 6 seconds. While you have all three of these going, you get an additional 15% damage boost. This, I think, is getting buffed so that it is easier to keep them all together. And I believe that is coming with the uh, the Barbarian patch on the way. So, this will be getting better. This is probably what we're going to take. But I think Unconstrained as well is going to be another fairly good option. Increasing Berserking's maximum duration is incredibly good. And increasing the amount of damage that you do while Berserking is very, very good as well. I'm using this on my <clears throat> Frenzy build right now, and I'm having an absolute monster of a time with it in a good way. So, that seems like as good a transition as any for me to move on to Barbarian number two. 
This build is my frenzy build. This is a two-handed sword wielding zero uh, two-handed bludgeoning weapon barbarian. Uh, this is actually really, really way better than I thought it was going to turn out. And it's only getting buffed in the next patch because Double Strike is getting a very, very decent buff as well so there's a lot of things going on in this build the reason i am even putting this build on hold at the moment is because the slog from level 60 to level 70 is just so extreme that it feels really really hard to get motivated to push through that when the patch hasn't happened yet so with the upcoming patch for Diablo 4 that should be alleviated a little bit and I can get back to hard farming on this build to get it to the level that I want but all that being said none of that is in any way important for what we're doing in terms of abilities so frenzy like I mentioned is very important for this build and you'll end up taking one of the seasonal malignant hearts to make it even better the uh, the heart that lets you knock down uh, enemies when you reach a certain attack speed is incredibly good because frenzy obviously rockets that attack speed way up and when you knock people down they are technically stunned so we'll come back to that in a second but basically remember you're gonna take frenzy up to four points you'll take enhanced frenzy because you will gain additional fury at your maximum attack speed bonus and then you're gonna take combat frenzy because you get damage reduction for each stack of frenzy that you have which will go up ridiculously high once we get the unique uh the amulet that gives us another two stacks of frenzy on top of our maximum so as it is right now you can generate up to frenzy hits an enemy to increase by 20 percent up to 60 percent so you can get three stacks of frenzy as it is but we'll be able to go up to five stacks which means 40 percent damage reduction through a combat frenzy which is pretty gross that is really good on top of the Barbarian's already inherent 10% damage reduction just for being a Barbarian. Good stuff. Now the core tier for this build is your Double Swing. Since it's mainly a dual wielding uh, build, we're going to be doing a lot with those two weapons. We're not going to be using the bludgeoning weapon period in any of our abilities but it is going to be useful for its legendary aspect at the very least and our two-handed slashing weapon will be useful as well just on a much smaller scale than our dual wielders so that being said double swing is the premier dual wielding ability for the barbarian dealing a pretty significant chunk of damage and only costs 25 fury Couple that with the fact that enhanced double swing gives you that fury cost back if you hit a stunned or knocked down enemy. This ability can just pay for itself. Uh, it's going to require a little bit of finesse before you get ground stomp, but it's going to work, I promise you. You can right click into the stratosphere as long as you are hitting a stunned or knocked down enemy. Uh, after enhanced double swing though we pick up furious double swing because that means that our berserking is going to go on for an additional two seconds anytime that we cast double swing and when you've got a full fury bar that never goes away you never have to stop casting double swing so you never stop berserking it is awesome now on the defensive tier i mentioned just a second ago ground stomp ground stomp is actually perfect for what we need in this build because not only does it generate fury with tactical ground stomp but you're also going to stun tons of enemies in a huge aoe around you and just the enhanced ground stomp is going to increase the duration of the stun that you'll hit when your ground stomp goes off Ground Stomp dealing that big circular AoE stun is incredibly helpful, but it's going to make even more sense when you realize that you can stomp a huge group of enemies and get a whole bunch of fury and then jack your fury bar all the way up to maximum because your double swing does not cost any fury because you're chopping people who are stunned forever. Now also on the defensive uh, tier of things, you can pick up Imposing Presence. 
just for the additional life. I put two points into that to get another 10% max life because honestly, it doesn't even feel like I need to put more points into, you know, the uh, active abilities in this build. So, the next tier is our brawling skills. There's no actives in this tier for this build, but you do want to take swiftness to get that 12% uh, increased movement speed for three points. And you are also going to want to take aggressive resistance, which gives you a 9% damage reduction while berserking, along with prolific fury, which means that your fury generation is going to go up while you are berserking. So those free double swings now become positive double they become fury generating double swings so when you hit someone who is stunned with double swing you're going to get all 25 fury back and more so you can fill up that fury bar to go infinite double swing all the time on the next tier the weapon mastery skills you're going to pick up uh, rupture and you're going to pick up steel grasp both of these only require one point and you're going to pick up each of the enhancements for them too. So one point into Rupture, one point into Steel Grasp. And then for Rupture, you'll take Enhanced Rupture, which is going to cause a bleeding explosion. And beyond that, you'll take Fighter's Rupture, which is going to heal you for 18% of your max life when you use Rupture. That is an incredibly useful ability. That's almost 20% of your health bar back with one Rupture and it comes in clutch when you need to survive some things, but your cooldown on your potion, sorry, you're out of potions because you've just been slamming them on the world boss or the goofy seasonal boss who just does ridiculous garbage. <sighs> I've already talked too much about that, but anyway, your Steel Grasp is going to give, uh, you're going to give it the Enhanced Steel Grasp, which makes enemies vulnerable when you uh, hook them for three seconds that's a very big window to be vulnerable and then fighter steel grasp is going to give you berserking for two seconds when you swing this ability too steel grasp is actually working incredibly well it wasn't working the way that i wanted it to when the game came out but now it is actually pulling tons of enemies directly in front of the barbarian at which point they are easy pickings for the ground stomp to get them smushed get you some fury and start slicing them up uh, the other thing you'll want or the other couple of things that you'll want on the weapon mastery tier are passives starting with pit fighter and thick skin pick pit fighter is going to give you nine percent increased damage to close enemies and six percent distant damage reduction which is pretty good defensively speaking when those rangers are running away from you trying to deal damage or reducing that but anybody close to you is getting an extra big chunk of damage when you start chopping away and then thick skin anytime that you take direct damage you're going to take 1.1 percent of your base life as fortify so this will be more important later but fortify is very good for keeping your uh, you know, single standing, zero mobility, barbarian alive for a long, long time. Apart from Pit Fighter, though, you'll also take Slain Strike, which is dealing extra damage to injured enemies. No Mercy, which is giving you an increased crit chance against uh, immobilized, stunned, or slowed enemies. And then after Thick Skin, you'll pick up Defensive Stance, which is giving you uh, uh, more damage reduction from your Fortify as well as counteroffensive, meaning that while you have fortify of over 50% of your max life, you're going to deal increased damage of 12%. Moving down to our ultimate tier, you've got Duelist. This is uh, going to give you a, an increased 9% attack speed while you're using one-handed weapons. Attack speed is super important for this build, so making sure that Frenzy can go full Frenzy faster is very, very good. After that, you'll pick up Wrath of the Berserker as your ultimate, which is going to make you unstoppable as well as uh, Berserks for the next five seconds. So if you don't remember, Berserking gives you an increase in move speed and damage, and you're going to be unstoppable for this period of time as well. And when you're dealing damage with Frenzy in Wrath of the Berserker, you're giving yourself even more Berserking because every time that you hit someone with a basic skill in Wrath of the Berserker, over the first 10 seconds it's active, you're going to give yourself Berserking for 5 seconds. 
So the uh, additions to Wrath of the Berserker, the Prime Wrath of the Berserker is going to give you another 20% increased move speed as well as Fury Generation. So if you are under the effects of Wrath while you are double swinging, you basically get a full Fury Bar with zero effort, as long as you're hitting someone that's stunned. And then Supreme Wrath of the Berserker is going to give you uh, an increase in your damage bonus to Berserking by another 25% for every 50 Fury that you spend, which is only two double swings, which is incredibly easy to do because your attack speed is going to be very high and you can get this damage bonus racked up very, very quickly to very, very, very good amounts. The key passive, I don't think I have to explain it to you, it's unconstrained, it's just going to increase Berserk's max maximum duration by another 5 seconds and increase the damage bonus by another 25%. So, it works insanely well with Wrath of the Berserker, it works insanely well with this build because this build is Berserking all the time and that damage is so good. So. There you have it. This build is all laid out for you in the abilities. I highly recommend it because it is incredibly potent right now. I haven't gotten up to World Tier 4 yet, but once this patch kicks off and I can actually get some XP, that might change. The next barb that I want to talk about is not on the Seasonal Realm. This is one of my Eternal Barbs, and this is the Bleeding build that I was able to whip up pretty quick before the season started but haven't really been able to give a whole lot of time to because the seasonal characters have been taking all my attention and with the new patch coming that will be even more so but this build is still incredibly fun it has some really um interesting ways that all of the abilities are going to work together so i do still highly recommend it that being said your uh, your first ability is called Flay. This one shouldn't be too hard to figure out. Flay is the only basic ability that is going to do a baseline bleed. You can also get a bleeding ability out of Lunging Strike, but it's kind of up for debate whether or not that is going to be as useful as Flay in this instance. Regardless, Enhanced Flay is going to give you the opportunity to make an enemy vulnerable when you hit them with Flay, and that chance is going to be doubled when you're using a two-handed weapon. After that, you have got Battle Flay, which is going to increase the amount of bleeding damage that enemies take when you hit them with the direct damage component of Flay. So basically, when you're whacking people with Flay, that is increasing the bleeding damage that they are taking by 10%. For the next three seconds so flay it is a workhorse in this build it is one of the first two abilities that really make this build possible um but that will make more sense once we get down to the ultimate tier as far as the core tier goes you guessed it it's just rend rend is super easy it is a big cleave in front of you that is going to deal basically the same kind of damage that flay is it's kind of interesting the way that these two really aren't very different from each other but rend can ultimately hit in a bigger aoe and deals more damage um but as far as the the bleeding that it can do enhanced rend is going to in extend the duration of vulnerable on enemies by two seconds so if you manage to make an enemy vulnerable with your flay your rend will increase the duration of that vulnerability by two seconds and then Violent Rend is going to deal 12% increased damage to vulnerable enemies. So again, you can see Flay and Rend kind of swapping uh, the uh, effectiveness between each other, which is very important because when you are playing this build, you'll have Flay on your left click, uh, Rend on your right click, and when you have the Fury to spend Rend, you'll basically be swapping back and forth between the two, left click, right click, and these two feed off of each other for filling up your fury bar, extending vulnerable, getting people vulnerable, dealing damage, stacking up the bleed, which will be very, very important once you pick up Rupture later in the build. Now, on your defensive skills, the, the defensive skill tree of this build is going to have you taking uh, Rallying Cry. Rallying Cry is an activatable button that you need because Rallying Cry gives you the opportunity to gain fury 
by uh, hitting a button you're going to get 20 fury and then you are going to get increased resource regeneration while under the effect of rallying cry as well you need to have tactical rallying cry to do that and enhanced rallying cry which gives you unstoppable while rallying cry is going but those two things considered you also get move speed and um that extends to your allies as well as increased resource generation which extends to your allies as well all of that being said this ability doesn't sound super interesting i it honestly feels like kind of you know a, a budget wrath of the berserker but it's still it still serves a purpose and it does very very well in this build for getting you the initial fury that you need and a lot of the generation that you need for flay or to support flay in getting you enough to make sure that rend is usable all the time uh, on top of that though for the defensive skill passives pick up your outburst and your tough as nails passives you only need a couple points there two points into outburst and one into tough as nails should see you through they uh they ultimately give you thorns and uh, increase the damage that your thorns do um so it's 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 not bad you, they make your thorns do bleeding damage too which is never a bad thing because bleeding in this build is going to be very important for dealing a lot of damage on your brawling skill tier you're going to take booming voice which gives your shouts increased duration good stuff there because rallying cry the longer that lasts the better you're going to resource generate uh then leap is going to give you some fury generation again with power leap like i mentioned in the earlier build it's just fantastic all the time there's really no other description description for it you're also going to take aggressive resistance as the previous build but you only need one point in here because we just want battle fervor and that is going to give us a uh, an ability to gain berserking when a brawling skill hits which is going to be a leap we want to leap in get berserking get to the damage once you make it to your weapon mastery skills you're going to want to pick up rupture and this is arguably the pinnacle of the build rupture is going to let you basically cash in all of the bleeding damage that your build has built up through flay and rend and anything else going on and then rupture is going to deal all of that damage to the targets that it get hit uh, immediately so when that happens obviously you cash it all out you deal all the damage all at once and it is really easy to rack up bleeding damage with this build enhanced rupture is going to make the uh, the rupture deal damage in an aoe which is fantastic nothing but good stuff to be said about that and then fighters rupture gives you the heal which is yet again very 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 good uh, you're also going to want to take one point into hamstring which lets you slow healthy enemies with your bleeding skills and then you are going to take cut to the bone as well meaning that your bleeding effects deal 15 percent increased damage to vulnerable enemies the other passives on this tier are again pit fighter slaying strike no mercy and two points into expose vulnerability which is going to give you the ability to cause your uh, so basically when you use rupture your next core skill which is rend is going to make enemies vulnerable for two seconds finally we make it down to the ultimate tier which you're going to pick up duelist again for this build but more importantly you are going to take iron maelstrom iron maelstrom is the coolest ultimate that the barbarian has they are going to uh, hook their weapons up to big chains swing them in a big aoe and you're going to activate this three times you can choose when to activate them but once you hit the iron maelstrom you're in it so you have to use all three before you can go back to your other abilities the first is going to deal damage and stun enemies in a, uh, a point in front of you the next is going to have you deal bleeding damage in a big aoe around you and then the final is going to have you just dealing flat damage with the big circular swing from there iron maelstrom is a very short cooldown to begin with 
and it is going to be dealing increased critical strike uh, damage as well as have an increased crit chance with the modifier prime iron maelstrom and then supreme is going to have you uh, basically reducing the cooldown of iron maelstrom every time that you swap weapons which will be happening very often because you'll want to have different weapons signed to uh, rend and flay and then like I mentioned earlier, you're clicking back and forth between the two. You'll reduce the cooldown of Iron Maelstrom very, very, very quick. Uh, you'll also pick up Tempered Fury, but only one point there, so you can get Furious Impulse. And that means that you're going to be getting a 6 Fury every time that you swap weapons, which will happen very often. And then as far as the key passive goes, Gushing Wounds. Gushing Wounds is going to have you get a chance uh, up to your critical strike chance to increase the bleed amount by 100% of your critical strike damage bonus and then when you overpower a bleeding enemy that is going to create a an explosion that deals bleeding damage over five seconds as well so gushing wounds is the uh, just the basically the best bleeding key passive and it is getting buffed in the next patch so there's no reason not to have it in a bleed focused build and then lastly, there is the Deathblow Barbarian, the original, probably the most fun way to play the Barbarian as it is right now, because one button death is obscenely exciting. I will direct you all to the Deathblow videos on this channel. If you haven't seen them already, they're pretty popular, so you're probably not missing out on anything, but Deathblow is one of the best ways to play Barbarian, and I think that we can all agree, based on any boss's health being above 75%, getting deleted by a single death blow at that range is goofy. So, that is it for me, everybody. Thank you so much. Let me know if you enjoyed this build sampler platter of Barbarian brutality. This is the best class in the game, according to my opinion and my opinion alone. I'm sure lots and lots and lots of people would disagree, but I will argue it to death. Nothing is better. And that's all there is to say about that. Peace out, everybody. <laughs>